starting with the three main mechanism involved in blood coagulation so mainly there are three main mechanisms which are involved in blood coagulation so starting with the first mechanism that is vasoconstriction of the blood vessel so in this we'll see that first point like whenever there is vascular injury it will cause vasoconstriction vasoconstriction of the injured vessels and as there will be vasoconstriction of the injured vessel it will it will result into contraction contraction of the smooth muscles smooth muscles in the wall of the vessel so repeating the first point so whenever there will be vascular injury there will be vasoconstriction of the injured vessels and as a result there will be contraction of the smooth muscles which are present in the wall of that injured vessel now the collagen the collagen is exposed is exposed at the at the site of injury which promotes the platelet adhesion or the plate will will stick to each other and which promotes platelet adhesion to the to the injury site so what are the main points we have to remember so the collagen is exposed at the site of injury and that promotes the platelet adhesion at the site of injury so first there will be vasoconstriction because of which it results into contraction of the smooth muscles then the collagen is exposed at the site of injury and that promotes the platelet adhesion to the site of injury now the platelet release now at there is platelet adhesion so the platelet releases cyto plasmic 
granules they will release cytoplasmic granules which contain which contain serotonin serotonin then adp and lastly that is thromboxin okay these are the three products that the platelet releases platelet releases the cytoplasmic granules and this cytoplasmic granules it contains these three things serotonin adp is adenosine diphosphate and thromboxin now this all cytoplasmic granules content they will increase the effect of vasoconstriction they will increase the effect of vasoconstriction okay therefore the vascular spasm that will reduce the blood flow and blood loss is prevented so once again i will repeat it so one of the mechanism of blood coagulation is vasoconstriction of the blood vessels so whenever there will be a vascular injury the vasoconstriction the vasoconstriction of the injured vessels it will result into the contraction of the smooth muscles of that particular walls now then second point is collagen is exposed at the site of injury that promotes platelet adhesion then this platelet they will release cytoplasmic granules which will contain serotonin adp and thromboxane adp is adenosine diphosphate now this content of the cytoplasmic granule they will increase the effect of vasoconstriction therefore the vascular spasm it will decrease the blood flow and blood loss is prevented the second mechanism of blood coagulation is platelet plug formation so now we'll start with the points as the platelets are exposed to collagen the platelets release adp and thromboxane and also serotonin as we saw in the first mechanism as the platelets are exposed to the collagen the platelet releases mainly three things that is adp thromboxane and serotonin so now this thromboxane its whole name is thrombok zain a2 and serotonin which are being released from the granules they enhances vascular spasm 
as we saw in the first mechanism so because of this the platelet plug the platelet plug is activated by a glyco protein called so the platelet plug is mainly activated by a glyco protein called one will brand will brand factor one will brand factor in short form is written as small v w f one will brand factor so because of this the plug plated plug is activated okay then the adeno sign diphosphate it attracts more platelets to injured site to injured site also this adp the adp then thromboxane the adp thromboxane they cause the surface of nearby platelets to become sticky and as a result of sticky platelets accumulate that will result so this is this will final result result into platelet plug formation okay and also you have to remember that the platelets are alone responsible for the cessation of bleeding okay so see i will repeat it once see uh, as we saw in the first mechanism that as a platelet they will be exposed to the collagen and this platelet they will release mainly three things that is adenosine diphosphate thromboxane and serotonin so this thromboxane a2 and serotonin they will enhance the vascular spasm that is the contraction the platelet plug then is activated by a glycoprotein which is known as von willebrand factor in short form we can write small v wf then the adenosine diphosphate it attracts more platelets to the in injured site adenosine diphosphate and thromboxane 
it will cause the surface of the nearby platelets to become sticky and as a result of this sticky platelets accumulate it results into the platelet block formation also we can see that the platelets are alone responsible for the cessation of bleeding cessation means stoppage so therefore it is called as primary hemostasis i'll just write in below primary hemostasis okay the third mechanism of blood coagulation is clotting so here the tissue factors which are produced by the platelets they will activate the intrinsic and extrinsic mechanism of blood coagulation okay so the tissue factors which are produced by the platelets they will activate the intrinsic and extrinsic mechanism of blood coagulation so this will further activate the prothrombin activator so because of this prothrombin activator there will be conversion of the prothrombin into thrombin so because of the prothrombin activator there will be conversion of the prothrombin into thrombin and because of thrombin there will be conversion of the fibrinogen into fibrin this fibrin it polymerizes and forms the blood clot so clotting so firstly the tissue factors they are produced by the platelets that will activate the intrinsic and the extrinsic mechanism of blood coagulation further they will activate the prothrombin activator this prothrombin activator it helps in the conversion of the prothrombin into thrombin then this thrombin it will help in the conversion of the fibrinogen into fibrin at last this fibrin will polymerize itself and it will form the blood clot so starting with the clotting factors so there are in total 13 clotting factors and you should always write the numerics in roman okay so the first factor is 
fibrinogen. Second factor is prothrombin. The third factor is thromboplastin. Also called tissue factor. Then the fourth factor is calcium ion. The fifth factor is proaxilene. It is also called Lebai factor. The sixth factor it is not present. We'll keep a dash. Seventh factor is proconvertine. It is called as stable factor. Then the eighth factor is called anti hemo. Philic factor A. In short form, you can write A H F dash A. The ninth factor is called Christmas factor, or you can write anti hemophilic factor b the 10th factor is called steward prover factor then the 11th factor is known as plasma thromboplastin antecedent also called as PTA okay the twelfth factor is known as Hageman factor and the thirteenth factor is known as fibrin stabilizing factor FSF it is also known as lecky Lauren factor so these are the 13 clotting factors first is fibrinogen then prothrombin, third factor is thromboplastin or tissue factor, fourth is calcium ions, fifth factor is proaxillarin or also known as labile factor, sixth it's not present, seventh is proconvertine also known as stable, uh, stable factor, eighth is antihemophilic factor A or you can write AHFA. Then ninth is Christmas factor or anti-hemophilic factor B. Tenth is toward prover factor. Then eleventh is plasma thromboplastin antecedent, also known as PTA. Twelfth is Hageman factor. And thirteenth is fibrin stabilizing factor or Lucky Laurent factor.